I will be forever the myth. You're the king of kings, <laughs> There's always a pecking order. The little peckers never mess with the big peckers. So I'm a rooster, and he's a chicken for the week. All right. Well, let's uh, let's move on and talk about the other shows in 1980, Jerry. Um, I want to talk about the um, uh, Mr. America that year, which was a huge contest. Gary Leonard, right? Yeah, Gary Leonard was the winner, and you know, by by 1980, man, it, it was a huge show because they had a lot of uh, a lot of uh, bodybuilders from all over the country going in there. Right. You know, it's funny because I have a I have a poster in a frame here, right in my place. Oh, really? It's- Mr. America, 1980. It's right over here. It's a guy holding. Uh, it's a mythical bodybuilder holding a light is coming out of his hands. It was in California, right? It was in California. Uh, yeah, yeah. I've had this thing for ever since 1980. 40 years. <laughs> yeah. It's like an art. It's like an artistic picture. So I put it up on the wall. You know. Yeah, yeah. You know, but uh, yeah, that was an interesting show. You know, Gary Leonard. He had competed before that, right? He didn't. He didn't win though. Uh, well, he. Uh, he- he took second to Ray Mansour the year before. Okay, right. So he was the more or less the heir apparent to win. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what was the top five there, uh, John? Do you have it listed? And that well, by then they were holding it in uh, weight classes. So in the heavyweight, oh. Gary, Gary Leonard was first. Uh, Greg DeFerro was second. Lance right. Rayer was third. John Kemper fourth, and Billy Arlen was fifth. Billy Arlen was from Texas, I remember. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then, John, you know, John Kemper was a great bodybuilder from New Jersey. He, he was oh, yeah. Diamond Jim, famous Jimmy. He had yeah. Years. yeah, in Jersey. I knew John Kemper later became a uh, IFBB official. Real nice. Guy. Yeah, yeah. I knew, knew him pretty well, John. Nice guy. Of course, he passed, he away. passed away a few years ago. Yeah, yeah, nice guy, though. You know, And of course, Lance, geez, Lance Strayer. Very yeah. thick, very thick. Another guy with, geez, tremendous arms. Yeah. Wow. I mean, oh. uh, he's a. I remember that show because um, I was in the Teenage Mr. Central USA in August of 1980, yeah. and Lance went in it for some reason. He was already like a national level competitor, but I remember in Chicago he was like a legend. Like people were like, oh my God, Lance Strayer. You know, everybody thought for sure he was going to win Mr. America, and he yeah. went in that show and holy, I was blown away. I was like 17 years old. I was like, oh my God, this guy's like a Greek god. You know, he's going to. I thought for sure he was going to win the Mr. America. I couldn't believe he got third place. He was so, yeah. his arms were so big. Yeah, his arms were gigantic, were just huge. I mean, he was another guy that fit into that category of, you know, you got to see him in person to really appreciate the thickness this guy had. Yeah, yeah. Really big. little blocky, though. I think that's why. Yeah, he was. That's why, that's why he never reached the kind of the elite stage of, uh, you know, like a professional Mr. Olympia type. Yeah. Because he was. A little bit too square, a little bit too blocky, thick but blocky. He kind of had like uh, short arms and short legs, didn't he? Exactly right. Yes, yeah. he did. Yeah. So threw uh, off his symmetry a little bit. Yeah, but he had some really good. I think he had a really good back too. If I remember. Huge right. back. Yeah. Super yeah. wide back. Yeah. A very wide back. Yeah. And who was who was second again? Greg DeFerro. Oh, Greg. Yeah, I knew Greg very well. Yeah. yeah. I actually trained with him a couple of times. I used to call him Rocky. Yeah. They, uh, he slightly resembled St- uh, Sylvester Stallone. He was a nice guy, uh, uh, Greg. And uh, man, I'll tell you, he trained hard, that guy. He, I remember doing- Greg won the, uh, the international that year, too, in, uh, yeah, in uh, yeah. the Olympia. Yeah, another guy with really great arms. I remember yeah. doing, I remember working arms with him once at Gold's Gym. We were doing barbell curls, and he, he curled until, the, uh, until like the bar literally dropped out of his hands. Yeah. He just, he slammed it so hard on the bench. I thought he was, the bench was going to break. The ball looked almost bent. I mean, you know, yeah. guy, and he's very heavy on tricep push now. I mm. couldn't, I, I was in pretty good shape. I couldn't, I couldn't keep up with the guy as far as the weights. He, yeah. he was a very intense trainer. A really nice guy too. He's from New Jersey. Yeah. I remember when, I, I remember he lived in a place called Cherry Hill, New Jersey was called. Oh, okay. You know? Yeah, he showed up uh, years later. Uh, I tried to give me one of the first masters, Mr. Olympia. Unfortunately, uh, he wasn't in shape at all. He, you know, yeah. he had a, a, lot, a lot of hard times. Uh, he had a uh, marriage went sour and his wife cleaned him out, he told me. Mm. And, uh, and uh, Bill Grant and I hung out with him. And uh, it was very sad because he was very depressed. 
And I remember taking Bill Grant and I said, you know, Greg is like really depressed. I mean, he, somebody needs to talk. This guy looks like he's going to commit suicide. Hmm. He, he, was, he was that bad off, you know? What did, he, what did he die of, Jerry? Do you remember? What? What did he die of when he died? You know, I don't, I, I don't know. Did, he didn't kill himself, did he? I don't know. If I don't he, think I don't so, no. I remember he passed away, but I don't remember what it was that killed him. I think it was cardiovascular disease, but I'm not oh, sure. Okay, I'd have, I'd have to look it up. Yeah, but uh, I, I felt really bad when he died because he was a, a always nice to me, always a nice guy, you know. And uh, and like when he was in his peak, he was a top bodybuilder. Oh, he was Great. super thick. I mean, for an amateur, especially, he was super thick. Yeah. Very thick arms, very good yeah. arms, and, you know. And Gary Leonard, this is a guy I never really knew. Did, did you, you you interviewed him, right? Yeah, I interviewed him. Yeah, real nice guy. He, you know, he, he seems like, but this is a guy who I never actually met. He's one of the few guys of that era. Never spoke to him, never met him, mm -hmm. never saw him train. I, I know nothing about him except, didn't he become a law enforcement officer after he uh, bodybuilding or something? Maybe. Wasn't he from Fresno? Yeah, he was from Fresno. Fresno yeah. Yeah. But I knew very little about the guy. He had a nice build, though. Yeah. You know, nice build, but I, I know almost nothing about that guy. Yeah, he had a real, like, um, for a heavyweight, he had a real symmetrical build. Not a huge guy, but very symmetrical, very well performed, and real yeah. cut, real nice, real nice definition. He was one of those guys that, for some reason, I can't explain why, he never got the publicity that a lot of the other guys got. And there was another guy like that who also won the America. He was from Flint, Michigan. I uh, can't remember his name. A nice, he had big legs. Uh, and he also passed away a couple of years ago, this guy. This guy had nothing. This is a guy who won the, uh, a, I think he won, it was the AAU America. No publicity at all after that. Nothing. What year, what year Jerry? Oh, God, I can't, I wish I could remember this guy's name. I know he was in, he had like his own construction company. Hmm. Uh, I, I tried to find out why, I always wondered why he died. You know, he died very relatively young. <clears throat> but he, uh, he won the America, he competed in the Nabby universe, and then he just dropped off and it was never, you know, mm. out of body competing again. Had a nice build, big calves, but but uh, uh, this guy stands out to me. Because I was always curious about him because no publicity, nothing. A guy who won the America could be nothing, not an article, not a thing, nothing. Wow. wow. And I, the same with Gary Leonard. There was like relatively little publicity about the guy, mm. which I I can't explain why. I mean, if I was, I wasn't writing for Weeder in 80, but if I was, I would have done a story on the guy for sure. It was in the uh, 1980s that he won? Who? It was in the 1980s that he oh, won? No, no. This guy, I think, won it in, uh, in the 70s. Oh, God, what year was it? 74, no, who was in 74? Was that Mahalik? Ron Thompson? That's it, Ron Thompson. That's yeah. the guy. Yeah, you're right. He Ron didn't get much publicity at all. Ron Thompson's the guy who's that guy was always a curiosity to me because I, I, I remember trying to find articles on the guy. Yeah. And there was, it was usually when a guy won the America and then he goes in the universe, there's some, somebody writes an article on him. Yeah. Not try and find an article on this guy. You'll see. Yeah, you're right. There's an article about him winning the contest, but that's it. Mm -hmm. Nothing, after, no training articles, nothing, no photos. Nothing. Now, I don't know. The guys before that, you got Dickerson in 70, you had Casey in 71, you had Mihalik in 72, Jim Morris, 73, and then he was 74. But yeah, you're right. You never hear nothing about him. I mean, those other guys all had some publicity, that yeah, article. Sure. But for, I don't know whether it was because Ron Thompson either didn't want the publicity or didn't care about it. I, I never knew because he's a guy, a guy I never met. I know that a friend of mine competed against him. The guy who I trained in the 60s, the guy named P. Caputo, competed against uh, Ron, uh, uh, Ron Thompson. And I, 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 you know, I'd seen one photo of him in the match. He won some junior America, Ron Thompson. I think that's what my Pete competed in. And, and, I, and he'd won it. Ron Thompson won. I said to Pete, I said, how does this guy Thompson look? He looks pretty good. He says, oh, yeah, he's, he's good. He, he looks good. He's got real big calves and stuff. He's, 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 a, he's pretty good. You know, that's all he said. Hmm. But I... I Never knew anything about this guy. Yeah, all, I was kind of surprised when I read one day that the guy died, and you know I tried to find the cause of death. Never found anything. Nothing. Mm. Nothing. Not a thing. I don't know what what he died from or anything. Mm. Interesting, you know. Well, in the light heavyweights that year at the uh, eighty America, 
Bronston Austin beat Ron Toothy. Uh, Bronson, I, I knew Bronston Austin. Bronson yeah. was a really nice guy. Very nice. I trained. Uh, he trained at Gold's Gym for a while. Very nice guy. Super. Very trained. Trained very hard. Did he? He was a. He was one of those really responsive guys. Never got out of shape, but he started, he started training hard about two weeks before the show. Oh, huh. he looked great. He looked great. I mean, he changed his body in two weeks, like a Frank Saint type. Great yeah. biceps, right? Yeah, great biceps. Real peak, like real Albert peak, Beckles. Yeah, like Albert yeah. Beckles, yeah. yeah. Real peak bicep. And he had a very, hard look. His whole body was real hard. Real thin. Hard look. Yeah. He, he would, he, he, when he trained for the show, he'd get, he'd, cha- he'd get harder and harder every day. Wow. I don't know what he did. I don't know whether it was a genetic thing, but yeah. But he, I, I remember him being a, a very soft-spoken, very nice guy. Yeah. A very nice guy. He was from yeah. Danville, Illinois, which I grew up in Illinois. Is that right? Yeah. 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 I, I talked to him quite a bit back then. Yeah. And who, who was after him? Oh, Rod was a good friend. Rod Tufo, yeah. Rod Tufo, yeah. I knew him very well, too. I, I, so you know, you look at Ron Tufo's career, I mean, I think the first uh, America he did was uh, 76. And uh, I don't think he won the short class there. I think Pat Neve won the short class that year. But after that, he was winning the short class every year, like 77, 78, yeah. 79. And then um, now it goes to light heavyweights, and he takes second. Well, Ron did not have an aesthetic physique at all. Yeah. Very chunky looking, you know. But he had extremely deep abdominals. I mean, really yeah, deep abdominals. Really good abdominals. Kind of thick waist, but very deep abdominals. He had pretty good arm development, you know kind of chunky looking legs and stuff like that but he had an overall body just didn't have good aesthetics so yeah. you know when he I mean he was very mad I can't remember which show he lost the contest to Tony Pearson 78 yeah America I remember he was very annoyed about that I think and that was that was probably his peak right yeah that was the best he ever was and he was very veiny he was very vascular for that show and he was very unhappy because he thought that uh he felt he was much uh, he- more heavily muscled than uh, he felt that uh, Tony was was you know good, but he felt that he just had a lot more muscle than Tony and should have won. Yeah. Not and I remember I think I told you the story. Ron had this tattoo of some sort of dragon on his arm there. Yeah. And I, and I, you know it's kind of funny today when you have all these guys you know <laughs> competing with tattoos, but Ron felt it detracted from his physique. He even thought that it was costing him in contests. He thought that the uh, tattoo was obscuring his, you know, shoulder and arm definition. So yeah. he decided to go to some quack doctor, and the guy used some sort of, I don't know what he tried to burn it off. I don't know, but I remember the poor Ron. He he had a bunch of sh- scar tissue on his arm. It, 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 in other words, it almost would have been better to leave that tattoo. It yeah. Like his, the skin was deformed. Yeah, yeah. So you know the the, the uh, today I'm sure they have better methods to remove, but back then in the 70s. It was very crude, you know. I felt bad for the guy, you know. I mean, yeah. it looked like he, had, you know, what it looked like. You ever see these uh, skin of a person that was in a bad fire? That yeah, was yeah. That that's what it looked like. Yeah, you know. His, in other words, he took off the tattoo to, to make the arm look better, and it made it, it look worse. worse. Right. Very bad. And, well, what, you know, what's amazing about him is how good he was at a young age. I just looked up his birthday. He was born in '57, so that means in '76. When he went in the America, he was 19, and he got second yeah. place. That's crazy. Very young. Yeah, he was very young. Unfortunately, the guy... Well, in 78, he was 21. 21. <laughs> wow. Just a young guy, you know. But I remember, uh, unfortunately, after uh, he, he was, became a heavy alcoholic. You know, yeah, and, uh, yeah. And he literally one of those guys that drank himself to death. Very sad, you know, because he was a nice guy. Ron That's was a nice Sometimes you see that in bodybuilding where these guys are so good at young age and they kind of reach their peak in the early 20s and then they go down after that, you know? Right, yeah. It's like some of these child child actors. You see. Yeah. I mean, yeah. They're, they're big, uh, they're, they're superstars as a child actor. And they like, go downhill. <laughs> what's this, Macaulay Culkin, whatever his name is, you know? Yeah. I mean, he was, you know, what is it called? Going Home with that movie made. I mean, oh. the guy, yeah, the guy just went nowhere. And then he got into drugs and alcohol himself. You know, he's, yeah. it's a, they get so frustrated. They're thinking the careers that they're, they're going to continue. But once they're not cute anymore, nobody's interested in them. Yeah. You know? yeah. I mean, even, I mean, Shirley Temple, who's the biggest probably child and actress in history, was, I mean, she was so such a prodigy that 
uh, that she was accused of being a dwarf. <laughs> Not a dwarf, a midget. They thought she was a midget because they couldn't believe any kid could act and dance and yeah, talent as much well. talent. Yeah. As an adult, right? And, and she was, she actually saved the movie studio. I think it was MGM would have went wow. bankrupt during the, she single handedly, her movies saved an entire movie studio. But what happened is as she got older, she tried to make a couple of movies in the late 40s, never went anywhere. And then she just retired. Of course, then she went into government. She was the ambassador to the United Nations and somewhere in Africa or something like that. So she, she had a good career. Shirley yeah. married a guy from Black. She was Shirley Temple Black. Yeah. You know, and she passed away a couple of years ago. But uh, it's the same thing. Some of these bodybuilders, I mean, they're, they're great teenage bodybuilders. Yeah. But for some, when they get older, it's like they just burn out or don't reach their potential. I don't know why. Yeah, so he's like, in the 1980s, he was 23. And he was already starting to lose his peak, you know? Yeah, already. Yeah. I don't I don't know his personal life, so I don't know what literally drove him to drink. Yeah. I don't I don't think it would be the bodybuilding career, but it might it might have entered into it. The fact that, you know, he thought he might have thought he'd be like an elite bodybuilder. Yeah. yeah. And he never made it. Yeah. yeah. Some maybe it frustrated, maybe it I could see that. Yeah, I, yeah can I, I can see that too. That yeah. might have been into it why he, you know, turned to drink like that, you know? Very sad. Here, let me read some of these other guys that were in this because you had Bronson Austin in first, Ron Tufel in second, Ernie Santiago, who went on to win the Mystery yeah. USA. He was third. I don't know why. Yeah, he lived in Hawaii. I, Hawaii, I yeah. Yeah, I knew Ernie. He's another guy who uh, I used to talk to him all the time at Golds. Very muscular, great yeah. abs, nice build. He has yeah. the kind of build that would do well. Very well, in the, and like today in the classic uh, division, he'd be a lot, like a top guy because he had he had a physique like like uh, uh, I can't I keep forgetting his name the guy who won what's his name again? Well, Bumstead. he had like a Bumstead type physique, you know. Yeah. Uh, uh, but he's a guy who I, I used to talk to, and and a couple of years later I saw him. Many years later, he shows up. Hey, Ernie, how you doing? They had no idea who I was, so I just walked walked away. <laughs> <laughs> It's kind of funny because you, know, you talk to this guy all day, you think he'd remember. He had no idea who I was. You know, I said, all right, you know, a nice, well, nice. I remember in, uh, in 83, he won the USA overall as a middleweight. That was really but, unusual. Yeah, yeah. No, he was very muscular. Like, yeah. But, yeah. And I do remember him being from Hawaii. Yeah, I do too. Yeah, yeah. And Charles Glass was fourth. Charles Glass, yeah. yeah. You know, Charles Glass, uh, <laughs> of course, I know him very well. He was a, I don't know if you know, did you know that he was the captain of the gymnastic team? At yeah, the, I remember, uh, remember when he did his routine at the 84 Olympia, he was doing handstands and stuff, you know? Charles Glass was the captain of the gymnastic. When he posed, he'd do these flips all over the stage. Yeah, the black yeah. yeah, he did nobody, do a flip at the Olympia. Nobody could do that except him. Right. He almost his trademark. And and I remember interviewing him on, on we laugh about it today. In fact, I reminded him that I saw him about a year or two ago and I reminded him of this. I, I said, Charles, do you remember when we did that interview on when you were competing in the 80s? We did the interview on your dietary techniques. And and uh, and I asked you what your contest diet was, and you said you had no contest diet. I said, <laughs> he says, Well, I eat whatever I want. He says, uh, uh, just, like I'll eat French fries and you know, cheeseburgers. And, and I, I still get, you know, I'm still shredded. So I don't need to follow any diet. So I said to him, I saw him at the, one of the Fit Expos about a year ago. And, and you know, he's much older now. And of course, he's now a, a top trainer at Gold. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I said to him, Charles, I said, I bet now you can't eat like that, like you did back then when you were competing. Here. You probably have to follow a diet like the rest of us, right? <laughs> it's wrong. I still eat whatever I want. No, really? Wow. <laughs> he told me that. Yeah. We yeah. both went, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Jim Seitzer was fifth. Remember Jim Seitzer from Ohio? Yes, I vaguely remember him, yeah. I, I interviewed him on my show, too. Yeah, yeah. Paul Love was seventh. Paul Love, the great, great body. Yeah, from, uh, where was it? Uh, California, right? Was he in California? Uh, San Jose. Yeah. San Jose, California. He promoted the um, 83 Nationals, remember? That's right, he, which I attended. That was where Bob Paris won. Yeah. And, uh, and he was course, Flex, Flex Wheeler's father-in-law, right? Yeah. And his daughter, uh, he, he had, uh, she was an identical twin. Yeah. She 
the uh, I can't remember any, Marilyn or something. I can't remember. Her Madeline name. was it Madeline? Madeline, Madeline, I think it was. Yeah, she married, as you say, Flex Wheeler, and uh, she was in the room uh, when uh, Flex had a problem where they called in at the Arnold show. They were she was his fiance at the time. They called uh, me in the room because Flex was having some medical problem, and I remember she was crying her eyes out because she thought that Flex was dying. I'll never forget that. Wow. Yeah, she was actually in tears. She was so, so messed up, you know? Yeah. She was a very very pretty girl. I remember. Very pretty, yeah, I remember her. Yeah, yeah. Paul was a nice guy. I spoke to him quite a few times. Yeah, he, he, just, became, died. he just died a couple of years ago, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He had nice physique, you know, you know yeah. good actor, small waist. You know, nice guy, though, nice guy. You know, I keep saying they're nice guys, but... <laughs> I know I sound like probably, I probably sound like Will Rogers who always said I never met a man I didn't like. But the truth is, I have to say most of the guys I thought were I'm not I'm not laying it on. I, I genuinely thought they, they were all nice guys. I can't think of anybody right. who I could, was a real bastard other than Sergio Oliva. You, yeah. know, like, you know, I told you the story of right. the only one that stands out. Yeah. And his son, his son is just the opposite. His son's a great guy. Yeah. You know. Well, what can I say? That's kind of how I felt. You know, I was at the Olympia a couple of weeks ago and I was interviewing a lot of these people and I thought a lot of them were really great people, you know, like, uh, yeah. like that Oksana Grishina we were talking about, the one that she seemed like just yeah. such a genuinely nice person, you know. Yeah. Or, or, you know, Brandon Curry, when, when uh, yeah. you know, when I, I, after he won the Olympia, I saw him at, let's see, what was it? It was the, uh, oh, it was the uh, thing for Franco, the Franco Memorial. Oh. Uh, Arnold it was at a hotel in uh, Santa Monica, and he, you know, he's wearing this suit with the immense shoulders like this. Oh yeah. You know, I mean, I'm wearing a sport jacket, and I, I feel, I feel like my God, I feel like some fat guy who just fell off a truck standing next to this guy. <laughs> you know, so, so you know, I, <laughs> I walked up to him, and I said and the same. It was almost the same conversation I had with Phil E, because I, I, I had only met Brandon Curry one time many years ago. He competed in a show at the Veterans Memorial in, in uh, Culver City. And I was with Bill Grant, and Bill Grant knew him already, and he introduced me. And I remember saying to Brand Brandon Curry, this is kind of weird. Remember, this is like 10 years before he won the Olympia, or maybe even longer. I said, you know, I got to tell you, you know, you have the potential, I said to him, to go all the way. You could be Mr. Olympia. It's amazing I said that to him. Yeah. All those years ago, you know, so before I told him that, I went up to him. And I said, uh, Brandon, my name is Jerry. Said, oh, Jerry, he said, I read your stuff all of, almost exactly what Philly, and I didn't think I would know me, you know? He said, oh, yeah, I'm a big fan of yours. I read your stuff all the time, he goes, you know? And then I reminded him of the story. I said, you know, we've already met at Culver City years ago. You competed and won a show, and I told you that you, you know, that you, uh, you had the potential to be Mr. Olympia. And he laughed. He says, well, it looks like you were right, huh? I said, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was a nice, nice guy, nice guy, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So in the middleweights, our friend, uh, our mutual friend Richard Baldwin, what took first place in the middleweights? Yeah, Richard, one of my good friends, Richard Baldwin. Yeah, he he's uh he's what they call the Apollo type physique, you know, very symmetrical, yeah. slimmer, yeah. kind of along the lines of a Frank Zane type, you know. Yeah. But great abs, small waist, you know, great. Richard had terrific tricep development. You know, the funny thing is, the guy is what seventy four or five. I don't remember offhand, but he still has great on. I don't know if you know. Yeah, I see him on Facebook all the time. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he put a picture of himself. He's training at home now because of this gym's being closed, and he just has dumbbells. He put he you know he put up an arm shot. His arm looks great. Yeah. He's using a pair of dumbbells. Yeah. He's, you know, he's still got it. You know, and he and he 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 told me not long ago. He said he put an inch on his arm. I said, Richard, that's unbelievable because you're not supposed to be able to put any muscle on after seventy. Yeah. It's, you realize you're going against nature. I don't know how you. <laughs> what power do you, man? No. You know, yeah. He needs to get in shape every year too. He'll like diet down and get in shape just to see what he looks like. That's amazing. Well, he got that from Frank Zane because Frank Zane, yeah, every year, even long after he stopped competing, every year he would choose a certain time of the year to train like he's training for the contest. He'd get in top shape, take a couple of pictures. He'd do that every year. He, I don't know if he's still doing it, but he did it for many years after yeah. he stopped competing. Yeah, yes. you know, just for the hell of it, you know. And then the lightweights, uh, Ken Passarello won. Remember him? Oh, sure. Ken Passarello. This is the guy 
I, I always tell the story. I mentioned him in one of my articles uh, because this is a guy who started, he's one of those rarities among bodybuilders. You know, most bodybuilders uh, start out thin. I don't know if you were like that, John, but they, they, they the, the natural, yeah. physique, they tend to be thin. Arnold was thin. You can go on down the list. Very rarely uh, do you have a bodybuilder that start out as fat or obese. Because the fact that the, from a scientific point of view, it's a lot easier to get cut and ripped if you start out thin because you don't have as many fat cells to yeah. reduce blah, blah, blah. Well, Ken Passarello, is, uh, he was from Connecticut, if I remember. He was a, a, a exception to the rule. He was a, a like a 350-pound fat guy. I mean, bloated, big, fat guy. I don't know how, I don't remember how he got into bodybuilding, but not only did he get his body weight down, but at one of the shows, they were, they were brought out this bioelectrical impedance, which at the time was a new method of measuring body fat. Mm -hmm. He had the lowest body fat measured of any, of, of, out of 50 competitors, this was the lowest body fat. And this is the guy who was a huge, big, fat, obese guy, you know, just only about, what, five years before. Wow. It's amazing. That's crazy. It shows, and he was, lightweight. You, he was a lightweight bodybuilder. Yeah, think about that. I mean, yeah. this guy... This guy was like, just like this. I mean, you know, really fat as a house. And, and he got it all the way down. I mean, and if you look at photos of the guy, if you could find him, take a close look at the photos at his waist. You could see a little bit of, of, a, of a little excess tissue on, on the side there. That was from where the, the stomach was stretched out so much that even though he lost all the fat, it still had a little bit of, you know, like loose skin there. Yeah. And because, because he got rid of it all. You know, he was fat. I don't know how many, how he, how long he was fat, but my point being, he was one of those rare exceptions of an obese guy that became a, a, a top bodybuilder. This Ken Prasser could have made a ton of money if he would have marketed that, you know, from before to after. You know, the yeah. There's a guy who really missed his mark, man. Yeah, yeah. Really, that guy could have made a fortune because if he would have showed, I think I remember Stina before picture, man. If he would have written a bit a, a, a book about how to how to uh, lose body fat. And, and become a champion from a fat, obese guy to a champion bodybuilder, the yeah. most muscular people on earth, man, everybody would have bought that. The guy could have made millions. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, I wish I would have known. If I would have known the guy, I would have offered the right to book myself. Right, right. <laughs> you got a percentage of it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know. Well, uh, let's talk about the universe because uh, that – that's uh, not very discussed that much. It was the IFBB Mr. Universe, which they called the World Amateur Championships. They held it in the Philippines that year. Wow, yeah. And it was interesting because nobody from America won their class. That's one wow. of the few years, I think, where nobody from America. Now, we'll go to the lightweight first. Hans Solmeyer from Austria Hans Solmeyer. took first place, and Ken Passarella was second. So Ken did really good. But Hans Solmeyer won. And I remember Hans Solmeyer. He was very, very shredded, very ripped. Hans Solmeyer is one of the guys that had a real bad effect from diuretics. He died, right? Yeah. 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 He actually died from uh, diuretics. One of the rare cases of that. Yeah. 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 That probably accounted for partially kind of why he was so ripped. Yeah. He was really yeah he was, I remember he was strided. His chest was strided yeah. all over. Yeah. yeah, he was. Yeah. 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 Now, in the middleweights, uh, Jorma Ratty from Finland. Remember him with the huge glass? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The great I, arms. I don't, I, I, I vaguely, I, don't, I think he might have recently died also, just recently. Did he really? Oh, wow. I didn't know that. I think I saw something about that. I could be wrong about that, but I could have sworn I saw something about that. He recently died. I don't know what the cause Yeah, you're right. He died in uh, actually 2007. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you, saw, you looked it up? Yeah. yeah, I just remember just vaguely that reading something about him because I, I recognized the name right away when I saw that. I, I didn't know he died. died. That's a shame. Yeah, I, I looked at that and I, I said, I remember that guy. I, I remember that guy. Could be. I think I actually met him when he came over here. Yeah, I remember he had, he had really good arms and really yeah. wide lats, like Franco lats. Yeah, yeah, huge yeah. lats. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But he didn't really have much of anything else. Like his legs are, I mean, his legs are very mediocre. Yeah. yeah. Even his chest and stuff, but he just had those two big body parts. That's it. That's right. That's yeah. right. Yeah. And Richard Baldwin was second, so he did good. Yeah, Richard was second. That's great. Yeah. So Richard took second in the universe two years in a row because he took second in '79 to um, to uh, Roy Duvall, 
right. and then he took second and to your Moratti in, in 1980. Right. right. And this was the IFBB? Uh, yeah, the yeah, IFBB. And it was held in the Philippines. And I remember, I, I actually have the videotape from it. I bought it from Wayne Glash. Right. And uh, I remember the, uh, was it the president or they call yeah. him what, the president of uh, the Philippines was there. He was there, yeah. Yeah. The dictator. He was a dictator. That's Wasn't the his wife the one with all the shoes? I was right. The wife, I was just, <laughs> just going to say, he took a bunch of, his wife had like like 10,000 pairs of shoes. So, right. What yeah, was her name? Yeah. Oh, I can't remember her name offhand. Oh, Imelda Mel, Mel Marcos, right? Imelda Marcos. Mel, that's it. Yeah, that's it. That's yeah. it. She was famous for her shoes. She had like 10,000 shoes. <laughs> I, I don't, don't ask me to explain that. I have no yeah. explanation. Yeah, I guess, was, I, guess he, I guess this guy loved bodybuilding and Ben Weider, oh, that's why he held it in the Philippines. He was a real fan of bodybuilding, that guy, uh, Barcos. Real fan. Yeah. I remember Ben Weider used to visit him all the time. Yeah. You know, he, he was trying to get Marcos support to get bodybuilding Olympics. So he'd go there quite frequently because Marcos was a, he was like a fanatical bodybuilder. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah. Another guy who was, was, uh, so this might surprise you, was one, at uh, one time the world's richest man, J. Paul Getty. Oh, I remember. He used to go to the Navi Universe, right? To go to the Navi Universe. In fact, there's a famous photo. You mentioned Bory Cope, him presenting Boyer, the winning trophy when Boyer won the Universe. It was yeah, I remember that. Yeah, yeah. 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 Getty. I mean, he wow. was uh, uh, he, he loved Getty. Loved to work out. He was really he huh. called himself a physical culturist. Is the way he expressed it. Yeah, and he yeah. loved loved wow. working out. He loved, he liked to box. One time, he even boxed Jack Dempsey. The Did you? famous. <laughs> yeah, wow. yeah. And, uh, Dempsey said he wasn't bad, you know, but. I guess uh, what happened was Jay Paul Gay was a young guy back then, you know, and uh, he got a little carried away with Jack, and Jack gave him a little shot, and knocked him out. So, <laughs> you know, it was like like a baby went like this, and boom, Gay was. <laughs> <laughs> was did Jay Paul Gay was he American? He was American, right? He was an American, yeah. But he yeah. Uh, last couple of years he bought a big mansion. He lived in London. Oh. Okay. <laughs> and he was so cheap. That uh, he put a, a payphone in his uh, in his mansion. <laughs> he actually stole the fake. And now uh, he explained why in his book. He says, you know, he says uh, when I was announced as the world's richest man, people suddenly started thinking that I should pay everybody's bills. Right. He said, when I go to a when I when I was invited to dinner, if there'd be fifty people there, the waiter would suddenly bring me the check, even though I was one of the invited people. He says that when people stayed in my house, they would run up my phone bill into the thousands. They figured, well, I'm the richest man, so I don't care. And I, I just got tired of it, so I put a payphone in there. That was, <laughs> that was his explanation, yeah. That's funny. <laughs> uh, the late heavyweight class, Bronson Austin, who we just talked about, he got second to Johnny Fuller from England. Oh, Johnny Fuller, yeah. Somebody just put a picture of him on Facebook just the other day. Johnny Fuller, I used to talk to him when, when um, he was from uh, uh, he, when the gym, uh, Gold's Gym was on Second Street. Uh, I remember talking to him and, and uh, he startled me because he said to me, <clears throat> he, did you know he competed in marathons? I remember that, yeah. He was, a, he was a strange guy. He had a lot of strange, quirky things about him. Yeah, but I mean, I remember when he told me that because he had these big legs, big yeah. calves. Huge, yeah, real thick. Right. And my, my and marathoners were always like these skinny, lean guys, you know. I said, Johnny, you compete in marathons? He says, yeah. I said, doesn't it affect your muscle size? He says, no. He says, uh, he, he says, he said, I've been a runner all my life, he says. And to me, it's natural. You know, it doesn't, doesn't do anything. It, it, it's fun. He says, I, I don't lose any muscle at all. Yeah. And I look, well, I'm not going to argue with you. Look at your man. I yeah. said, I, I, I just got to tell you, I, I've never met a, a, a competitive bodybuilder who also ran marathons. You're the first and last I think I'll ever meet. And he yeah. laughed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember he used to do 32 reps of every set. Remember that? 32 reps. Yeah, yeah, yeah 32. <laughs> I, I, can, I don't know why that figure. Right, why, why that, that number? Right. Why, why not 30? Uh, why not uh, 25? 25, right. That, That'd be 32. It was some sort of magic number, you know? Right. I don't know. Right. And then I remember his diet was really weird, too. He had weird, weird ideas about his diet. Yeah, I don't remember it, but I remember it, it was very eccentric, this guy. But nice guy. Very thick. I mean, back then, he had a real thick physique. Very, very thick. Very thick, yeah. I mean, he had these really thick pecs and stuff like that. Yeah. He passed 
a couple of years ago too. I'm not sure what happened here, but yeah, he died uh, 2007 or yeah. 2006. 2006. Yeah. yeah, yeah, nice guy. Yeah. And then Bronson Austin, who really looked good at that contest, he was in second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bronson was a top guy back then, one of the top guys. And John Torelli, uh, we were talking about earlier, he got sixth yeah. in that contest. Yeah, John. Uh, yeah, John, John Torelli. They, uh, he was, uh, I told John when he interviewed me, you know, that I wasn't laying it on to him, just like I told you. I said, you know, I, I really think you were underrated, I told him, as a bodybuilder. I said, because, and, he, and he, I said, let me explain why. I said, you, and I, I told him my philosophy, again, you have a complete body, head to toe. You had all the muscle groups. You had really great symmetry and proportion. Yeah. I think, that, you know, you were underrated. I mean, I think that you know, you were a lot better than people gave. I know you won titles, but I still think that you were a lot better than people gave you credit for. Yeah, he was very. Really, he said, he said, coming from you, I, I, it's an honor. He goes, you know, he really uh, appreciated. But I, I meant it. Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't say that if I didn't mean it. You know, I, I, you know, my philosophy. I think we, I talked about this, John. Like Franco Colombo, I didn't like his physique, so I never gave him a compliment. It's mm. not like I, I was mean. I just didn't want to lie to the guy. Yeah. If I don't. I don't think something is true. I'd rather not say it. Yeah. And I, I was never impressed by Franco's body. And he picked up on that and he never liked me because of that. <laughs> right, right. That's why I was surprised when they invited me to his memorial. Yeah. <laughs> the guy, the guy he, never did, he didn't know it though. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I mean, if he was there, he probably would say, look, get the hell out of here. Get yeah. out of here. And he'd probably call me out. You know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. But it, it's, it's impressive that the judges uh, rewarded someone like John Torelli, who had a symmetrical physique, was not a mass monster, but he was still right. able to place high in pro-level shows in the 1980s right. because he had he just had that nice symmetrical physique, you know. Right. Yeah. They, well, they, you hit it right on the head. That's why, you know, he would be he didn't win a Mr. Olympia so because he didn't have the, the, the mass. Yeah. But you know, he still had a great physique. I mean, the guy, yeah. uh, really nice physique, Torelli. Yeah. So in the heavyweight class, you remember Hubert Metz? Hubert Metz was the winner in the heavyweight class. I just saw a picture of Hubert Metz. Uh, he's in I still great shape, isn't he? He's something like 80 years old. and uh, yeah, He's in still in great shape. He was flexing his arm. He always had this little round bicep. Yeah. You know? And when he's flexing his arm, now he's an older guy. Because, you know, everybody's arm shrinks when they get past a certain age. So he's got this, it looks like a little golf ball sitting on his arm. Yeah. You know? <laughs> You know, you know, obviously he still works out. So more out, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, you know, yeah, he was, yeah, I remember him well. Yeah, yeah kind of a an odd looking physique, right? He was very tall, long legs. Right, right. Um, just the muscle shapes were a little different, but he was still yeah, good yeah. enough to win the Mister Universe. Yeah, yeah, he was good. Uh, not, not, not an overly aesthetic physique. You wouldn't call no. him like a, a beautiful physique type of thing. But he, he was muscular. When he was in shape, he was very muscular. He really was. He was in good shape, very well defined, that type of thing. You know? Yeah. Now Gary Leonard, who was uh, Mr. America, he was in sixth, so he really, he really dropped the ball at that contest. Holy cow! I wonder what happened there. I don't know. Well, I heard that. Um, I can't remember when the America was, but I think the World Amateur Championships was like two months later, oh. and he couldn't, he couldn't stay on his diet, and he went off his oh. diet. Yeah. Well, there you go. That's what happens. Yeah. yeah. Too bad Lance, when I interviewed Lance Strayer, Lance Strayer was third, and uh, he told me that some some of the officials from America called him up and said, "Can you do the universe? Because it looks like Leonard isn't going to make it." Wow. Yeah, because he was way off. Oh man, it's too bad they didn't have the club, the contest closer to the America. He probably would have done a lot better. Yeah. yeah. Now, it, you were mentioning why Gary didn't get much publicity. Maybe it was because because I remember Gary came back. I think in 1986. And they let him get his pro card, you know. Oh, okay. But if he would have won that class at the universe in eighty, in nineteen eighty, he would have been a pro in nineteen eighty one. You know, I, I mean, he probably lost five good years from his peak. You know, from just from losing that universe. You're probably right. You're yeah. Probably right. yeah. I just remember seeing him in a police uniform. I believe he became some sort of a law enforcement guy afterwards. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But that was unusual that. Um, the Americans didn't win one, one class. You know that that wasn't that wasn't normal back then. That is unusual. That's that's uh, very rare. Well, before I let, 
Before I let you go, Jerry, let's, let's talk about one more show, which was um, the uh, Night of the Champions. So oh. 1980, of course, they, they didn't have the Arnold Classic. They didn't start till like 10 years later. But the Night of the Champions was probably the second biggest show of the year, you know, to the compared to the Olympia. So Chris Dickerson was in first. Robbie was in second. Roy Callender was in third. Ed Corney was fourth. And Casey was fifth. Wow. I wasn't at that show for some reason. I don't know why I wasn't there. So that was only um, two years after it started, right? Because it started in 78. Yeah. I think, wasn't the first one of Robbie, if I remember? Robbie won the first two, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So then Chris won the third. Okay. Yeah. That was always a good contest. When I... Uh, when I rode for Weeder, that that was my uh, my that was that contest I reserved for myself because you know it allowed me to visit my family in New yeah, York. Yeah, go back to New York. Yeah, it was usually held in the spring. You know when New York was nice in the spring. Yeah, right. So I would always insist on covering that show for the magazine. So was it at the Beacon it. Theater? It was at the Beacon Theater. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was Beacon Theater. I, I used to love going back for that contest. It was kind of fun. Yeah. You know, they had. You know, I'd stay. Uh, I'd stay in Manhattan there, and uh, you know, I'd go to all the they had the, the, all the bookstores and stuff. You'd walk oh, around, yeah. and yeah. they're all. I know they're all gone now, you know, but uh, yeah, yeah, it was fun back then. Yeah, yeah, it was a pretty good contest. So now the Dickerson, that's amazing because I'm like I said, I, I just mentioned that it was between him and Casey. They were trading off shows. Like Chris would win one, Casey win the next one. Chris, I remember Casey won the one in Louisiana, which I remember that because he was from Louisiana. Right. And then by the time they got to the last one, Chris was good enough to win and Casey dropped down to fifth. And then by the time they got to the Olympia, Casey was way off. And then Chris was in the greatest shape of his life and he almost won it. Right. right. That's amazing that Chris Dickerson was able to peak so much. He must have just never gotten off his diet, you know? I don't think he did. Yeah. He was, he was very strict. I, he, he, I don't think he never let himself get out of shape. Yeah. And I think that was the trick. He was always like, Two weeks away from the contest. Yeah, convention. yeah. You know, he was one of the few guys. There was a couple of guys that did. There was a guy named uh, Larry. I can't remember his name. Larry Jackson. Do you remember Larry Jackson? Oh yeah, yeah. Larry competed. He was a friend of mine. He competed a couple of shows. And this guy was always in shape. Always in shape. Hmm. And I, I mean, always looked like he could compete like the next day. Yeah. And I said, I said, because you know, remember, all the other guys you see him after a show, they smooth out, they yeah. gain weight, like Gary Leonard did. You know. And I said to him once, Larry, how is it that you stay in this kind of shape? So he, he, I remember him telling me, I, I never go off my diet. I said, what do you eat? He says, I eat well, well, like skinned chicken and, and uh, what do you say, uh, 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 fish. You know, basically like, you know, pure diet. I said, don't you ever like crave ice cream or? Mm -hmm. he, he says, never. He says, I never touch that stuff. Yeah. He says, I he said, I like eating chicken, he goes. Yeah, yeah. And, so sure enough, I mean, the proof's in the book. The guy had abs. I mean, no body fat. I mean, if you could do that, that's the result. I think that's what Chris's secret was. I'm, I'm surprised was, Chris was able to come into the Olympia so thick looking because he had a lot of size, too. You would think yeah. dieting all the time, you'd flatten. You start to lose muscle and flatten out, you know. Well, I'm not sure what he did for that. It's hard to say, you know. I mean, uh, yeah, uh, but I mean, he might have just increased the calories, you know. Yeah. It, it, you know, if you're in uh, good enough shape and your body fat's low enough, you could probably boost the calories, get a little extra size, yeah. increase the maybe enough where you know you get that extra size without you know losing excessive amounts of definition. Your metabolism will be faster, right? Right. You have to, yeah. And, you know, where you uh, you you don't have an excess carbohydrate where you low, you know, get a little water retention and yeah. bloating. You could avoid that. It's possible to do. You you can do it. Yeah. I asked Chris about that when I interviewed him and I said, you know, how did you stay in shape all that the whole year? And he said, well, after the show, he goes, I junk out the next day, like on Sunday. And then I get right back on the diet on Monday. You know? there you go. Yeah. See, that, that junk out wouldn't affect him at all. No. If he, if he goes right back on the diet, it's like nothing. Yeah. It's not, all it's, it's going to do is make him feel good. Yeah. It's not going to have any adverse effect whatsoever. Yeah. So there's, there's your answer right there. You know, he just stayed on the diet all the time. Now, Robbie got second. So Robbie won it in 78, 79, then 1980 gets second. It's interesting, though, Robbie didn't do the Olympia that year. I wonder why. I think I maybe, why. maybe he knew uh, Arnold was going to do it. 
Hmm. I wanted. I have to ask Robbie next time I see him what, why yeah. he decided to go in. Interesting. Or maybe he was the, maybe he was discouraged about losing the you know the two prior years. The Zane. And, yeah, and maybe he just didn't. He didn't want to go there and, and you know afford losing again. Yeah. I'm not. I don't know what his reasoning was. Right. I'll, I'll have to ask him that. You know. Be funny if he tells me. Well, I knew that Arnold Ar was going to go in and yeah. why waste the time. Yeah. I read and his I, book and I think he mentioned that. I think he did mention that uh, he heard the rumors. Oh, he did. Yeah. Well, that, well, in that case, it was a smart move on Bobby's part. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he, you know, saved himself a big trip to Australia. You know. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, let me read some of the names on this list here because it's interesting. Um, Samir was only tenth. Yeah. But Tom Platts was 12th. And then when he went to the Olympia, he was in great shape. Yeah. And that was what year was that? 1980. So this was in May, and then the Olympia was in uh, September, October, you know. Wow. Oh, Platts got 12th. Jeez. Yeah. Oh. And McAway was 8th. So that, that was before he was starting to reach his peak when he was working with Vince Geronda, you know. Right, right, right. And Ed Corney got fourth, so that's that's really good placing for Ed Corney with all those other guys, you know, because he was getting older by that time. It's true, yeah, it's true. But Ed, I think Ed's posing really helped him a lot because nobody could pose like Ed. Yeah, so that really probably you know gave him a little bit of an edge, you know. And Steve Mihalik was sixth. Steve, wow. Steve went on to win the American '72, I believe. Right? Yeah, so this was eight years later, so that was pretty good placing for him. And then yeah. Har Harold Poole was 11. Harold Poole, yeah. Jeez. Yeah, all those years later, from the 60s to 1980. I want, I don't remember what Harold Poole looked like in there. I wonder how he looked in 80. Yeah. Probably, I'm sure he probably didn't look as good as he did in the 60s, you know? Right. Yeah. Although I, I remember training, me and Bill Grant trained with him right around that time at Golds, and he looked, he was in good shape. Yeah. Harold. Yeah, you know, so. I don't know. I can't explain the placing. I don't know. Bill don't know. Bill was in the cellar. Who? Bill Grant. He was in that show too. What did he place? Seven. Seven. Okay. So he did pretty good. Yeah. 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 AC was fifth. Ed Corney was fourth. Roy Callender was third. So Roy Roy went in the Olympia that later that year. He looked great that year. Yeah. And uh, Robbie was second. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Top guys there. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. kind of a contest I think that was forgotten about, 1980 Night of the Champions, because everybody focuses on the Olympia, you know, so nobody yeah. really talks about the Night of the Champions for that year. No, I actually forgot it myself. I did too. I was looking at the list. I was surprised to see these names and where everybody plays. Yeah. Especially yeah. Platts taking 12th, and then he yeah. looked really good at that Olympia and took ninth. you know. Yeah. I don't get it. I'm not sure the reason. Probably didn't peak. Just probably didn't peak for it. He probably was saving it all for the Olympia, you know. Yeah, I think you're right. I think you're right. That's probably it. Yeah. All right, Jared. Well, I'll, I'll let you go. Uh, thanks for joining me again for uh, the 1980 discussion. All right. And uh, next time we'll talk about 1990, and okay. we'll uh, we'll finish our wrap up for the for the end of the year. All right. Sounds good. I, ho I hope people enjoy the show. Yeah, we yeah. talked about a lot of uh, a lot of good stuff from the old days. So. A lot of anecdotes that you didn't read in the magazines. That's right. <laughs> and, and here, before we go, mention your newsletter one more time. If oh, you yeah. so. It's AppliedMetabolics.com. Okay. It's Applied Metabolics. It's a, it's a monthly newsletter. It comes out on the first of every month, 30 to 50 pages. I cover nutrition, exercise science, hormonal therapy, like you know, testosterone replacement therapy, anti-aging research, ergogenic aids. A whole bunch of topics, women's health and fitness, and it's all you know, evidence-based, science-based, and you know, and, uh, the advantage of it is is well, there's a couple of advantages. Number number one is uh, my years of writing experience, which is 45 years, 10,000 articles. So I know how to write. I know how to uh, translate very complex science into readable uh, prose that people will understand. Right. Also, is the fact that. I also include, as we do here, a lot of anecdotes about my experiences in bodybuilding as a competitive bodybuilder, the people I've known, Arnold, you know, I, I try and make it entertaining and that kind of stuff. And, I, I, and you know, if anyone reading that, I just practically guarantee, no matter what their level of education, they will learn something, you know, and, and hopefully they'll enjoy it. Uh, and uh, 
I, I, I can't think of a better publication anywhere on the internet uh, than mine. And I've seen quite a few of them. You know, some of them are, you know, pretty good, uh, you know, on nutrition or exercise, but no, nobody covers the range of topics I do. I cover a lot of topics that you won't find anywhere else, even all over the internet, even in blogs and in videos and stuff like that. So yeah. people want to, if people really want to know the truth based on both science and experience, they should uh, subscribe to Applied Metabolics. Again, appliedmetabolics.com. Yeah, that's what I like when I talk to you, Jerry. You, you, you know about all the research and you're able right. to explain it. You know, exactly. it's not like reading a boring scientific journal, which somebody's right. going to do. You're able to right. interpret that and then explain it, which, which really makes it interesting and it makes it understandable for the average person. I also see, I try to make it practical. In other words, there's a lot of topics I find interesting, but I always try to keep the audience in mind. And I say, well, would this interest a large number of people or is it just me? And if it's just me, I won't write about it. I write about something I think a large range of people would find useful. And if, they, if it doesn't meet that criteria, I don't write it. That's the, so I think a lot of people would like the stuff I write about. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And, and how much is it again? 10 bucks a month. You know, oh, it's, uh, I mean, I've had it now for five years. I've never raised it. It's, wow. it's actually five years already. That, yeah. And a lot of the other, uh, you know, digital, but they're, they're three times more money than mine. And, yeah. and, they, and they don't even give you as much information. So I think I have the best bargain on the whole internet, if you ask me. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I, I put so much work into it, you know. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I, I just think it's a, uh, it's. I think it's definitely a bargain. I mean, I've had a lot of people who subscribe and they send me emails. You know, you should raise the price, Jerry. I mean, you're ripping yourself off. Yeah. You're giving all this information so cheap and stuff like that. So, and then I get, you know, it doesn't happen anymore. But when I first started it. I get emails from crazy guys who say, why are you charging me? You know, <laughs> I, 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 I can't believe so, <laughs> Yeah, so I, so I would, I, I, I'd, I'd write, well, I, after a while I stopped responding at all to those things, but in the beginning I'd write back, well, let me ask you, do you work at a job? And you know, they'd write back, well, yeah. I said, well, uh, it's really nice that you uh, work for free. I mean, uh, and they said, what do you mean? I said, well, you work for free, don't you? And they'd say, no, of course not. I said, then why do you expect me to work for free? And that would, <laughs> and that would end the conversation. Yeah. When I'd say that, there would be no response because right. it suddenly dawned on them that what they're asking was ludicrous. Right. That I, that I work my head off and not get paid anything. I mean, what kind of moron would do that? I know. I mean, you, 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 I mean, it's not like I don't have bills to pay. I mean, you know, right. I'm not, I'm not, I don't own Amazon. You know what I mean? I, right. I have to work. You know. Right. So luck Luckily, those guys died out. I don't get that kind of stuff anymore. Yeah. But I did when I first, because you know what it was? These people are so used to getting everything for free. Right. On the internet, on the internet right. They think that everything, bar none, should be free on the internet. You know? But the truth is, a lot of stuff on the internet it isn't worth anything. Yeah. You know? I mean, I don't charge for my videos. I, I put I put a video on my uh, YouTube channel every week. I don't charge a penny for that. It's free. Right. You right. know, if they want if they don't want to spend it, they can look at the videos. But I mean, my videos can't com come close to with a newsletter. There's right. no comparison. Right. I compare. It's like comparing a headline to an actual news article. That's right. the difference. Right. You know. Right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, I hope I hope more of our listeners will uh, support your show, support your newsletter, and then sign up for yeah. it. Yeah. I, I yeah. I hope so too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jerry. Well, I'll, I'll talk to you next time about uh, 1990. And I thank you again for joining me. I thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Sure, no problem, John. Always good to talk to you. Okay, but I'll talk to you later. Yeah. Have a good Have a good New Year too. You too. You too. All right, bud. Bye.